Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. I'm back doing another episode of Where Are They Now? And for those of you who haven't heard these episodes, I will recap. And as you know, I coach a lot of people. And of course, you've heard me coaching people live on this podcast with my Coaching with Kim episodes, but I also have a ton of clients who I send off into the world after coaching them. And it's so amazing and rewarding when I hear countless success stories and read thousands of emails of how previous clients updating me on their life and how it's improved and often how they find love. So I do these Where Are They Now episodes to inspire and motivate you by hearing what happens to people after I work with them. Because, you know, it's great to hear a lot of these people on the episodes and then you're probably like, well, where are they now? What happened to them? And so whether that is on the podcast, working with them over time as clients, I hope you listen to these and get inspired by people's success and know that success can happen to you too, even during quarantine. And it will all start with a call. And that's what happened to this guy over here. So today I'm bringing on a guy for a change. I know you've been listening to a lot of women lately, and I do work with quite a bit of men. um, And he has an amazing story. He decided to invest in coaching with me. Check this out. After hearing me do a flirt workshop with a social event program, he wasn't even there, but he's such a go-getter. And this is why I believe he's so successful in his love life now too, is that he's like, I want to get this underway. Who is this woman? He hopped on a call and, you know, he was saying he, he was trying to get back out there after a divorce and He was finding it difficult to meet women due to him being relationship-oriented. He had been in a long marriage. He also lived in a remote area. He didn't have a lot of time. He's very busy to meet women. And he didn't know where to go. And dating without jumping into the relationship and getting sucked into the vortex of that, because that was really hard for him. You know, at the time, he felt like, well, where, you know, he didn't drink. He didn't know where to go. Um, he also, and this was a journey that we kind of worked on together. He would find himself kind of, you know, falling for women who would, he would really like, and then they, he was kind of going after it as the girlfriend, you know, like, again, he would get sucked into the relationship and he would go after women at warp speed. And sometimes it'd just be too soon, too fast. And he was looking for that diamond in the rough that would keep him up with him, his lifestyle, and still be attractive to him. So he really had to learn what it meant to have women earn him and see his value and express what he wanted, what he needed. So after working together, we uncovered some surprising mistakes he was making and what was blocking him from finding love. And it was deeper than just the location and, you know, how busy he was. He dedicated his coaching homework, like he tackled all of his successes in his life. And because of that, he started dating up a storm. And let me tell you, I think I created a monster in the beginning (laughs) because he was dating. And now he's in a beautiful relationship. Welcome, Matt. Are you there? Yes, I'm here, Kim. How are you? I am so good. And I was just super excited to have this conversation with you. Um, wow. What a journey, right? Indeed. It's been uh, one step in front of the other and you can't jump to steps eight, nine, and 10 before you take one, two, and three. I know. And you learned that, right? Like, I think you were going to step nine and 10 when we first met. Um, right. well, maybe, I mean, I'd recap, but I would love um, for you to share just a little bit more about you and, you know, like what kind of prompted you to reach out to me during, if you could rewind time during that time? Uh, basically I'm, I'm a construction consultant. I live in a remote location up in the mountains and I'm able to travel to the city every day. But, uh, being as I have a lack of time available to typically be able to meet women and whatnot, um, the online dating thing wasn't going real well. And I needed some help to kind of get some things turned around and, and get my focus where it should have been. 
Yes. Yes. Well, like, do you remember what life was like? I mean, it almost seems like and in some ways so long ago yet in others, it really wasn't like you really did the work and started having success kind of early on. But what was life like when it came to dating and what were some of the like challenges you were having just like internally and also with women in general? Uh, basically just didn't want to commit to anything, but at the same time, I did want a relationship and a girlfriend. So it was kind of a conflict. Um, not really, not really seeing, I guess, the value of myself after going through the divorce and needing to kind of reestablish that, if you will, and, uh, and find the qualities and, what I can bring to a relationship and, you know, the amazing person that I am and, and find somebody who wants to like me for me and not just because of the fact that the things that I do, you know, and whatnot. Yes. That was a huge light bulb. I remember that, you know, cause I, I think there were, you were leading with a lot of what you could do for women versus who you are. And I think that was a huge distinction. And like, once you started, you know, leading with that, I, I I felt like there was like a difference with the women that you were attracting and also what you wanted for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, in the beginning, what I did realize is that I was absolutely attracting the wrong, just, spiral down type of, of women relationships type of deal. If I were to get sucked into that. And I am so glad for the work that we did and going through all of that and being able to establish a dating plan in the beginning and figure out, okay, well, this is what I need to do. And this is the direction that I need to go, uh, without completely getting emotionally attached, you know, but being able to make some good connections, um, mentally and spiritually and emotionally without the, the necessarily sex getting involved and then all of a sudden everything getting complicated. And so being able to go from that to being able to go to some physical attractions and whatnot too, with a small mixture of it was great. But after a while I began to kind of realize that, you know what, I've enjoyed doing what I did and now I'm time to revise my dating plan and, and begin to move forward with what I really want. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you were having kind of, you know, in the beginning, those challenges with leading with more like with that, what, you know, what you could offer a woman and not really seeing your value, what kind of experiences were you having? Like, who were you attracting? Like, what, what did you notice in the women that you were dating? For the most part, um, a lot of it was fairly shallow. Um, somebody who's just kind of looking for that is typically a fairly shallow person. And that's kind of what I found. And, and it was, it took being able to go through all of that. And it took being able to date several women and make some good connections on an emotional level, on a spiritual level, on a physical level, on, uh, you know, an intellectual level and being able to do that with different women. And, and maybe one would be a physical, emotional, and one might be a physical intellectual and one might be a, you know, a physical spiritual, but what I really wanted was to be able to connect with somebody and find somebody that was able to meet all of those. And it was after being able to identify where all of those different connections were that I was able to see what I was missing in my past relationship, um, in my marriage and whatnot, and kind of the direction that I was going unintentionally in the beginning, but also was able to help me kind of hone in and basically clarify what I needed, what I wanted and what I was looking for in a partner. Oh yeah. No, I, and I remember just, you know, it was like having you slow down. I remember that being such an important part because again, like what I was saying in the beginning, you were kind of going at warp speed. Remember that one woman that you had and you were, you really liked her and you were like chasing her and chasing her. And like, you're like, Kim, why is why isn't this happening? You know? And there was that energy behind it yet. You weren't, you know, slowing down enough to really look at, well, what was she giving back to you? Right. Like you were right. so caught up in the chase versus what, 
really was happening and what was good for you. I, I remember that being kind of that, that moment where you started really taking a look at some of the stuff that you just said, which is so powerful. Right. You know and, who I'm uh, talking about, right? <laughs> I do, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it was it was too much too soon is what it was. And being able to take a step back and, and being able to kind of pace things. And um, after a conversation that you and I had, I happened to be talking to a friend of mine later that evening. And as we were talking, uh, we were talking about the Lion King and how basically a Lion King isn't chasing around the female lions. He walks over next to his tree and lays down and allows them to come and earn him. And so once I started to kind of get that visualization and, and, uh, that that's really what I had become over my life was a lion King. Um, I was able to begin to pace myself. I allowed the lionesses, if you will, uh, to approach me and basically take my pick from who I wanted and not just chase after the first girl that I really liked. The king of your kingdom. I love that. That is awesome. Yeah. What were some, well, I was going to ask you about that. What were some of the other like aha moments for you as we were coaching together that started like really shifting and your, you know, the way that you were approaching things and bettering yourself? Uh, one of the aha moments was really discovering the absolute value of myself. I remember a, uh, and I had sent you a text that day and I was going through kind of a big, a big deal as far as deciding what I was going to do with my future and, and really staking my entire life on, on the situation. And, um, and you know, the, the brag book was outstanding and the oh, brag yeah. book really kind of shifted a lot of stuff and opened me up to be able to see, remind me of who I was and all the things that I accomplished and, and how amazing of a life that I have created, you know, but, uh, it was that day when I finally realized that I was willing to jump into the deep end, you know, all the way completely full heartedly and go from there. And once I decided to do that is basically shortly after is when I began to change my dating plan and what I wanted to see and really start to hone in on who I was looking for. I, I'm really happy you mentioned that. And for those of you listening to Brag Book, what that is, is it's really a way of recognizing your strengths and like holding yourself to it every single day, writing down something that you love about yourself. And what was so important with that with you is that it, that, for me, shifted that paradigm of what can I do for her versus this is what's great about me. And the mm -hmm. right woman is going to recognize that and earn that from me. And, and that was really huge, you know, but I just want to commend you too, because, you know, often I can, you know, I give other people work and everyone goes at their own pace, but I feel like the reason why you accelerated was because you took each and every homework to heart. Like, I remember you saying, Kim, where's my homework? You know, like, I, I want to know what, I want to like really work on it tonight. And so you, you treated it like, like you do with your business and it, it's how important it was for you to do that. And I think that motivation and inspiration also got you to where you want to go and are continuing to go. Right. Absolutely. And you know, self-improvement, I sat down a while back and asked some really tough questions and, and really lay, laid out what I wanted to see in my life for family, what I wanted to see in my life for career and recreational and intimate relationship. And a big part of that is the mental growth and, and taking care of yourself. Because if you're not, if you're not taking care of yourself, like you're somebody that you're assigned to take care of, um, a lot of times we treat our pets better. And that's not the way to go. It's once we begin to value ourselves and see that value in ourselves that we can actually truly bring that into a relationship and others can see that without us trying so hard. You know, the earning and the brag book was huge and it allowed me to recognize the amazing person that I was and allow somebody else to be able to find that in me and without me pushing, without me trying, with me just being me. And, you know, 
I heard a while back that any relationship that's not based in truth is nothing but a web of lies that is ready to unravel at any point in time. And so from that point, I decided to have a proper engagement in truth in my relationships to be vulnerable, um, open, honest, and decided to discover and build a relationship that direction, as opposed to any other way in any of the games that men and women play with each other. And I can tell you that it is the most rewarding, amazing feeling and exchange between two people that they can have. I love that. You know, I'm I'm so glad that you brought up the vulnerability piece because that is something, especially as a man, you know, working with so many men, it can be really challenging in what that really means. You know, everybody has a different interpretation of being vulnerable. And I think for you, what also helped you switch in the way that you were communicating with women is it wasn't about the sale, you know, it wasn't about, well, if you do this, just do this. Remember, like there was even the the conversations and the communication, the words that you were choosing and trying to like get the girl kind of thing. But when you started switching into how you feel and really like seeping into that, you know, feeling so that a woman can really get that like authenticity connection from you. I also think that was a big switch for you. Yeah. Being able to share from that aspect, as opposed to just hiding behind a a facade or whatever. Yeah. um, That, that was huge, you know, and with the connection that we had made, um, it just continued to grow because of the fact that we were both willing to both willing to enter into that and be honest and be open and be truthful. And if there is a, an issue and, and we've had conversations where um, we didn't agree on, on things or whatever, but it's bringing those things up in such a way and creating, providing a space of communication within which there is no judgment in the form of rejection of the other person's statements or ideas. and by doing such, it just has led to amazing places and something that I've never done before. And I kind of figured if I wanted something I'd never had before, you got to be willing to do something you've never done before. Hell yeah. And the things that you've never done before are super uncomfortable, but it's the discomfort that causes the change, right? Otherwise you just keep doing what you're doing. And so you did. That's what I'm saying. Like you stretched and you pushed yourself. And I, for, for women listening to this, I, I, first of all, we are recording this. If you're listening to this in audio, obviously you can hear Matt talk, but if you hop over into YouTube, you can actually see him and it's astounding. And, and the reason why I wanted to bring you on video, because I think women think that men don't have these insecurities and, you know, vulnerabilities. And when you look at Matt, it's like hard to believe that you had insecurities, you know, when it comes to stuff like here you are successful, good looking guy. And especially where you are now in this, you know, loving relationship, which we're going to talk about in a second to recognize and realize that, you know, you're not alone out there. We all have these insecurities and it isn't until like we start recognizing and looking in the mirror and seeing that value and how awesome we are, no matter what gender you are, no matter what age you're at, ethnicity, it doesn't matter. It's about really loving yourself is what we're talking about here. So I just wanted to highlight that because I think women will be blown away when they see you that, that, you even had any of these challenges before. (laughs) Right. No. And, and that's the thing is that, uh, every, everybody deals with an insecurity or insecurities at some level and being able to, like I said, finding the value in yourself, because, um, there were several moments I did not want to tell her how I felt. I did not want Mm. to tell her that I really, really liked her and whatnot, you know, because I didn't want her to think that, that she was, that she already had me and, and, you know, things like that. And then I'm like, oh my God, this, that goes right back to the childish games and all the crap. And it was actually during, uh, during one of our trips. And the funny thing is, is we both have been guilty of creating and making up words in the past. And, uh, and one of our past trips during that trip, um, it had gone beyond just liking each other. 
And we had agreed to be vulnerable and open and truthful with one another. And, uh, and I told her that I didn't like her anymore, that at this point it was more than like, but it wasn't to love. And so made up the word loke. And so we loke each other. <laughs> and uh, that's, oh, I like that. And, and so that's how it's been. And that's been our word. And it's just been so much fun and just really amazing to be able to share that with somebody. Oh, okay. So inquiring minds want to know, you keep alluding to this, she and her, and everyone's like, who is this person? So tell us, you know, how you met her and what is life like now? Like, I mean, you're alluding to it, but I want to hear more. Uh, funny part. I was actually on a podcast video with you um, about three months ago mm -hmm. and I was heading out to San Diego and whatnot. And, and uh, there was, uh, I had switched my online dating apps over to San Diego and had ridiculous amounts of women that were trying to like me and whatnot. So I picked the top three and went oh, wait, through pause and for a text. second. Pause for a second. I want everyone to hear that. Cause remember you used to think it was online dating was like super hard and you were in this remote area and, and, and it was, how could you ever like attract women? And here, this guy was so busy online. Like we were almost like saying we got to have a chart to create, like keeping up with all these dates and these women for you. Cause you were just, they were coming out of the woodwork. So anyway, I just wanted to highlight that. Yes, yeah, so I took uh, I took the top three women um, yep. and ended up with a date with one of them and didn't quite connect like I was looking for or hoping for. And the truth of the matter is, is even at that time, uh, I was just looking for something fun and short term while I was in San Diego. And so in the meantime, I wasn't expecting to meet anybody serious or whatever and was planning on, on sending my apps back. Um, however, one girl one of the girls who had sent me a message, uh, I ended up messaging back and we never had the opportunity to meet. Um, we had only texted, uh, she had been exposed and was awaiting her COVID test. And so finally the results of the COVID test came back while I'm sitting at the San Diego international airport or at the, um, Los Angeles airport heading back to Colorado. And we ended up talking for the first time that night when I got back to Denver and it has been unbelievable ever since. We, um, about three days after kind of really connecting, and I don't even know how I talk to this woman as much as I do on the phone, but we talk at least probably an hour a day ever since we've met, if not more. And uh, there was such a connection that one morning I sent her a text and I says, What if I altered your day? And the next text message that I sent back to her, was a schedule of flights from San Diego to Colorado. And I flew her out here for her first trip. We had an unbelievable, just magic time together. Um, two people appreciating one another, connecting with one another intellectually, emotionally, spiritually. Um, the physical part was definitely not a problem. Um, <laughs> and it was, it was amazing. It was, it was magic is what it was. And uh, it was the kind of thing that, that everybody, I guess, would kind of hope for and that you like maybe see in the movies, but don't kid yourself. I had to, I had to date 50 women to be able to find this one. And I, there's a lot of messes out there and I guarantee there's a lot of messes on the man's side as well of guys, whether they're not willing to commit or whether they're whatever, you know, so but we continued on from there and the next trip she decided to up for and came back out to Colorado again. And at this point we have been dating for three months exclusively. Um, we have been to five different States together and uh, every other week we go see each other and I'll be back in San Diego next Wednesday to visit with her for another four or five days. Oh, you know, there's a lot of layers here too. You, I, I like that you also brought out that there's so much depth here. It's not just the physical, there's a spiritual, there's an emotional connection, you know, there's what, but also just to give everyone hope out there. Cause a lot of people say, oh, I'm just going to wait to date when COVID's over and when things get better. And I actually think in this case, it, 
it worked to your favor because it allowed you to slow down and practice all the stuff that we were working on to build that emotional connection with this woman. Do you feel the same that that absolutely time? Yeah, absolutely. It, it didn't just allow me to slow down. Um, it forced me to slow down. And so mm-hmm. when, when you're not able to see somebody for a week and a half or a week in between or whatever, Um, it's, it's more of a connection on an emotional and every other level, as opposed to just physical too. And, uh, and that's been, that's been key. But one thing that, that I would want everyone listening to this to know is that you have to know your intent. You have to know your aim, because if you don't, you're not going to find it. Um, you and I, and I, I wanted to share this with everybody and, and I hope you don't mind, but, um, Back when you and I had first started, I had put together a dating plan and I basically, as you know, I'm involved with military and some other stuff. And so I had my mission objective, if you will, and that was to enjoy, to get to know a variety of women and to make a few emotional connections and to just learn, play and have fun with women without getting completely attached. And so that was my mission objective. Right. And so I I did that. I had a great time. Um, you know, number one was to meet more women and flirt and to basically, and I learned and, and basically came to the realization that absolutely gorgeous women want to have a conversation with me. And, uh, (laughs) it really enjoyed the whole aspect of whether it was at Whole Foods or meeting women at Panera Bread or, walking back out of the bathroom at the barber shop and running into somebody and commenting about their eyes, you know, and then ending up with their phone number and a date. And we were both wearing masks and never really knew what each other looked like. And so we ended up going out, you know, did everyone hear this even in COVID, even with the masks on? Yes, it can happen. I love that. (laughs) Absolutely. So, so that was my dating plan back then. And that was awesome. Um, however, what I did want your listeners to know is that shortly before you and I had done that last podcast and whatnot, uh, we had a conversation and I told you that I was kind of done. I I was, I was over the dating thing. I was kind of irritated with it and, and keeping track of five, six different women on my phone and who was who and who did what or whatever in their past was getting kind of old. And, uh, and so I rewrote my mission statement. I rewrote my objective and And so that was to slow down the dating by selecting a chosen few women uh, to find the woman with the right qualities that I really wanted to be with. And so what I did from there is I wrote down a list of what I wanted, because I believe until you until you actually identify and 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 that's the great thing about writing is writing is formalized thinking. And so once you take your thinking and you formalize that and are able to put that down and know what you're looking for, then you can find it. You have to know what you're looking for in order to find it, though, because if you don't, that's how you end up wandering aimlessly and literally willfully blindly through your dating life and and through through your life in general. And so I just I want to read this list because I think this is really going to blow a lot of women away. Okay, so number one, a woman with a complex woman with the simple side, kind of like a country girl type of type of deal, Uh, ambitious risk taker adventurous, compassionate, empathetic, nurturing, affectionate, soft and gentle, feminine, but strong, authentic, genuine, a hard worker, a true thinker, a problem solver, loyal, beautiful inside and out, wants more than just for herself, on board, supportive, thoughtful, a fun texter, vulnerable, and a teammate. So that's in the realm of 20 something object, 20 something qualities that I was looking for in a woman that I sat down and that I defined a month prior to actually meeting the girl that I'm with. And ironically enough, she ended up doing the same thing uh, right about the end of August and had made a list. And after it wasn't until after about three to four months of dating or three to four weeks, excuse me, of dating that I had even opened back up my notebook. And that's, that was the first time I opened up my notebook and had looked at that list since I had started seeing this girl. And since I even made that list 
And ironically, as I read through it, all of a sudden it kind of really freaked me out to tell you the truth because she was everything on that list, every single quality. And, you know, I wanted somebody who was absolutely gorgeous and sexy and attractive as as well. And she was that too. And the ironic part is she read back the list that she had for what she was looking for in a partner. And I happened to be every single item on her list. Aww. And so, like I said, it is possible. Love is possible. And not just love, but amazing connection and real love is possible. Oh, that is so nice. I'm really glad you read that. And an important distinction about what you did with your list than sometimes what other people do. And that is... First, you were clear on your intention and what you were looking for, your mission. And that's why I had you write down your mission statement, because it was really important to have clarity in the direction you want to go. And once you set that intention after we had that second thought, what you did with that list had to do more with manifestation, you know, like, and, and also it had to do with what you thought you deserved. It goes back mm-hmm. to what we just talked about. Like, I deserve to earn this kind of woman, and I am putting that out there because I deserve it. I own it. And that is what was the empowerment piece versus when people, like, write out a list and then they're, you know, checking off the the marks, you know, as they're looking on the profile. And if one thing is off, then, you know, they'll be, like, swipe left, you know, kind of thing. And that's a really important – because people get very confused about lists. And I think the way mm-hmm. that you used it, and I want people to hear this, is it, it came from that sense of earnership. Like he knew that that's what he wanted, but then he wrote it out and he left it because it was the energy that you put out there that you got back. So what a beautiful ending of the story. And I know the story is going to continue and I, I can't wait. Maybe like we'll have you back on to hear how things are going for sure. But I'd love um, for you to just have any like words of wisdom to part with in ways of like, if you knew yourself then, what you know now, what would you tell yourself and maybe somebody, you know, in the position of having the challenges that you used to? Let yourself be you. Let Mm -hmm. yourself be embarrassing and fun and exciting and uh, just be yourself because that's that's exactly what I looked for. That's exactly what she looked for. And, um, you know, even, and I'll tell you a real quick story. And this actually became uh, something that we still joke about to this day. But she was nervous and had ended up eating something that creates gas, that causes gas. And just... <laughs> <laughs> just that one time it led to a outstanding tease and it has been an ongoing just laugh and a joke between the two of us like our own inside joke you know but uh but it's fun because we could both get to get to laugh and tease each other for who we are and not be too serious but uh you know i guess in the end set your intention let go and allow Ooh. So powerful. And if, if somebody's nervous about coaching or getting help, it, like, is there any advice you have around that? Well, in order to get something that you've never had before, you've got to be willing to do something that you've never done before. And if you've never had coaching with Kim before, then you've never <laughs> had coaching with Kim before. So <laughs> you should probably go ahead, take a look at the link below and click on that and request at least a 30 minute session with her to see if she can help you as well to find love that you're looking for too. Oh my God. Okay. I did not tell him to say that by the way, y'all. And you just like kind of said my outro for me, but I will reiterate. Thank you so much, Matt. Like you are just, you've been so special to work with and I can't wait to like hear about the continuation of this love story and, and not just with her, but with yourself. Absolutely. Well, I'll be looking forward to meeting up with you in Santa Monica again soon.
Awesome. Awesome. And for those of you joining, thanks for listening. It has been the Charisma Quotient as always. I'm your host, Kimmy Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. And make sure you go to my site, KimmySeltzer.com, to see more ways I can help you learn how to date and find love like Matt did. Just hop on a call. He already said it. Oh my gosh. Like, I'll just say it again. It is just a half hour. And you never know. That half hour could change the course of your entire life as it did for Matt. And who knows, maybe you will be the next star on Where Are They Now episodes to talk about your successes. And remember, working on you is working on your dating life. And stay tuned until next week with more tips on how to feel and look fabulous every day. 